Uh, let's talk about the incoming new prime minister. Okay, he's not named yet, but most likely Yoshihide Suga is going to be the prime minister designate next week when the LDP has its internal vote, and then parliament will likely confirm that within the next couple of days after that. Given the pandemic is the number one priority of the leadership in Japan, but also maintaining Abenomics, as Suga-san has said he will continue to do, what does Suganomics look like to you? Suganomics to me looks like a continuum of Abenomics. It looks like actually in a continuation and a, in, and a continued in reinvigoration of, 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 of Abenomics. So it looks like continued corporate governance reform. It looks like continue, continued revigoration of the economy and, and a continued focus on companies improving their profitability. How important is continuity? Uh, he's been called the continuity candidate, but as you mentioned, I believe in your your panel, you were saying that you know there's been 17 prime ministers since the heyday of the bubble years in the mid 80s, since Nakasone uh, was the prime minister, uh, and none of these people except Abe and Koizumi lasted longer than three years. There was one prime minister that lasted 64 days, another one that lasted 69 days. Abe going on close to eight years. We're not saying Suga-san at 71 years of age is going to last that long necessarily, but is, is that continuity, now that we've had momentum with Abenomics, critical? Yeah, the stability. Look, Abe's, I think, enduring legacy is going to be, be the stability that he brought to government, stability he brought to policies, and Suga is a direct continuation of that, of that stability. He was his chief cabinet secretary for all those years, the 2,779 2, days that Abe was in office. He continues to bring, he's, uh, he continues to bring the same vision to reinvigorating the economy. And yes, you know, the Japan Inc. staying on the same path, same path is extraordinarily important. It's important messaging for Japanese corporates and important messaging to uh, to the bureaucracy, and it's important message to the foreign investors. Well, what about the reform process? Uh, does the pandemic give corporate Japan the opportunity or the excuse not to embark on the reforms, like the share buybacks that you have proposed for a number of different companies as an activist investor? I don't think that's the case at all. I mean, if anything, I've heard that more in the foreign press than any of the domestic press. The Japanese corporates came into this crisis with more cash than ever before. Right? They uh, they came into this extraordinarily well prepared. Corporates, you know, something like 25% of topics as uh, something like 25% of topics came into this crisis with over 25% of the companies being net cash. Right? The, the dialogues that we're having with these corporates is is only what they're going to spend the money on, not that they're not going to spend the money. Those same companies are going to have over a 10% free cash flow yield. And so these companies are profitable. Yep. They have enormous amount of cash. They don't need the cash. They're actually looking to spend the cash. Whether that cash is spent on buying back their own shares, which we're a big component, proponent of, or that money is spent in M&A, every day in Japan you have another significant announcement of 10, 30, 40, 50 billion yen plan on being spent in M&A in the next year or two or three as corporates trying to take advantage of the crisis. Well, let's talk about your call at uh, the SON, Hazama Ando, which is the civil engineering company. Uh, I believe you have submitted a proposal to, uh, you know, for the board to uh, initiate a buyback, a, a fairly modest buyback. Uh, they have a lot of cash, as you said, but you're opposed to their plans to invest even more in low-yielding infrastructure projects rather than, you know, improve a return on equity with a share buyback. It's, it's, how much of a struggle is that with the companies like Hazama Ando to get them to do this at a time when, of course, companies traded on the topics have an ROE about half of that of the S&P 500? That's correct. They have, a, they, have a, they have an ROE of less than half of the S&P 500 because their E is, because their, uh, you know, their uh, E is so large. In other words, their retained earnings is just so large and they have too much cash. And that's why their ROEs are so low. Uh, I, look, I personally prefer to buy businesses that, uh, that, that, that make money. And if you can buy them that are unlevered, that have a lot of cash, well, that just means they're even cheaper. Yes, they could be a lot more efficient. And we're you know, suggesting, as I'm Ando, look, we're suggesting them when they spend the cash. We think there's the best use of them spending their cash. And that best use 
would be a buy back, buying back their own shares. I mean, their shares traded uh, traded like 0.5 times EV bida. You just don't find a cheaper company. In our proposals to them, we yeah. suggest them, look, the earnings yield of the company is something like 130%. Why would you not buy back something that's yielding 130%? as opposed to going ahead and, and investing in new real estate projects where it would be hard to, we'd be hard pressed to get over a 10% ROE. And so the, the yield hey. is so much greater in buying back their own stock. Hey, Seth, I'd be remiss not to go back on your past calls at the Sohn conference. We have it all on the Bloomberg terminal, of course. Uh, Hoshizaki was last year's call, uh, the refrigerator equipment maker. A great business, you called it. They had a one-time scandal, but uh, it kind of uh, didn't do well through the pandemic. I'll give you a pass on that. I want to talk about Sony because you, you, you did all right in 2017. Sony shares are up 88% after you uh, made that call uh, in 2017. Uh, do you like tech in these high valuations right now globally? And are you sticking with Sony as well on their path? Look, I'm sticking with Sony. I think Sony's got a great business and not great business. Sony's got a, a great variety of great businesses. Right? And that's what makes Sony so fantastic. Look, it was said yesterday at the Count Lung, at the Sony conference, at the Count Lung Foundation's conference, that you know, in in uh, sometimes in decades, weeks happen, and sometimes weeks happen, and uh, you know, so in decades, weeks happen, and sometimes in weeks, decades happen, happened, and we just went through that, and you know, that's why I think you're getting such higher valuations in 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 tech companies where the world's just gonna embrace technology and realize that those changes that tech companies were discounted were gonna happen over the next 10 years just happened in the last six months. And so you see the power of all the, con the content that Sony owns, all the games that Sony owns, and it's just extraordinary. I think it's extraordinarily powerful. I think Sony is nowhere near, uh, kind of anywhere near full valuation. And on a global basis, it continues to look very cheap. And you're, you're fairly bullish on Japan as well. I mean, the topics is up 30% since those lows uh, earlier this year, or, or excuse me, 30% since March 16th low, uh, but it's still down, uh, what, 6% year to date. How much more upside do you see of uh, the topics? I think there is a lot of upside here. And I think that, look, I'm very bullish on topics. I think you've seen, uh, you know, you've seen a very big rally globally. You've seen an extraordinary rally in the S&P which is, albeit mostly the tech companies that have moved. But uh, you've also, we discussed it yesterday, I think you're seeing a bit of a transition going on from growth to value. Topics is more heavily weighted to, va to value. Japan is extraordinarily valuable. And we've hit this inflection point yeah. in corporate governance where people are, you know, buybacks are up a lot, dividends are up a lot, corporate activities, uh, corporate activities up, uh, up a lot, animal spirits continue to be invigorated. And so that should progress the value kind of seeking to be just a trap, but actually to being, a, you know, to being true value. And, uh, and so I'm very bullish on topics and very bullish on topics for the rest of the Japanese year.